Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you look at a clock, one with a second hand, that first tick after you turn to the clock seems to take ages. That next tick seems to take much longer than just a single second. So why should that be? Welcome to the weird world of a phenomenon known as chronostasis. Let's find out more. I've put a clock on screen now, so give it a try if you've never encountered the phenomenon before. Look away from the screen, and then suddenly look at the clock on the screen. Maybe you'll see this effect in action. So why does this effect happen? Does time really stop for a fraction of a second? No, of course not. That would be cool though. So what does happen? Well, when moving from one stimulus to another, the brain extends the time of the new stimulus. This is more usually a visual illusion, but it can also be an auditory illusion. Let's focus on our visual example. Chronostasis happens immediately after a saccade. A saccade is a quick, sudden eye movement from one point of fixation to another. So for instance, from whatever you were looking at to suddenly looking at the clock. So chronostasis involves a number of stages involving both eyes and the brain. It is important to note but this illusion only really works with a clock where the second hand moves suddenly from one second to the next, as I've shown in the clock on screen. It doesn't work with smooth moving second hands. Well, chronostasis is a kind of illusion. Let's have a look at the mechanism. But before we do that, let's have a quick think about our visual perception. Our eyes collect information from the world around us. That information is then passed to our brain and our brain then uses the information to create our perception of the world. So let's imagine that you're looking at a wall, but away from the clock. Light comes into the eye from the wall, and this then gets sent to the brain via the optic nerve. The specific part of the brain this information is sent to is called the visual cortex, and it's found roughly here in the brain. The brain processes this information, and this then is our perception which currently is a view of a wall. We now make a conscious decision to look at the clock. Muscles around our eyes start to move the eyes, and muscles in our neck start to move our head to face the clock. This process of turning to face the clock is the saccade that I spoke about before. Just before the movement begins, a signal is sent from the eyes to the brain. This signal is called an efferent cortical trigger and it tells the brain that eye movement is about to begin. As a result of this signal, for the duration of the eye movement, the brain is going to process much less information than it would normally, and this would then mean that any vision we had during the saccade would be very blurry and indistinct. In order to stop this, a process called saccadic masking takes place, and it's kind of this that's in effect responsible for chronostasis. During saccadic masking, the brain blocks any visual processing of the information during the eye movement. Once the eye movement is finished and the eyes are now focused on the clock, another efferent cortical trigger is sent to the brain to inform it that the saccade is over. The brain now starts to process the information again, which is now of the clock. This second efferent cortical trigger also tells the brain that a period of time is missing from its perception. In a process called neural antedating, the brain fills in the missing perception with the information collected just after the saccade. If you looked at the clock between the second hand movements, the visible perception that you will have just after the saccade would be of a clock with a stationary second hand. The brain now fills in the time it took for the saccade to happen with that stationary clock image. As a result, the second hand seems to take longer to make that first tick than for any other ticks. The clock appears to stop. If, however, you happen to look at a clock as it is moving, the illusion appears to be broken. This is also the reason why smoothly moving second hands don't produce the same illusion. It also appears that the length of the illusion is related to how long it took for your eyes to move from their original position to finally land on the clock.
If your eyes move just a short distance to land on the clock, the length of chronostasis isn't very large. The clock doesn't appear to stop for very long. If, however, your eyes moved a large distance, that took more time, and so the effect seems to last for longer. So I think that's enough for chronostasis for now. And until next time, thank you for watching.